Hello, everybody. My name is Nigeria Chambers. I am uh, the founder of Baco Belt Media based out of Washington, D.C., an online outlet. Uh, it's a pleasure to speak to two of you, Omari, and uh, happy belated birthday, and Milana. Milana, yeah, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, um, you great. You got a great room, bro. You compete with my room. What'd it do? <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome, brother. <laughs> nice okay. to meet you, man. How, yeah, how, how, is, how is DC? Are you safe? You good? I am. I appreciate that. Yes, I am. Um, things, I guess, are trying to get back to whatever normal is, but I'm doing good, brother. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I definitely want to start off by saying, you know, to two of you, thank you so much for your contributions in making this film American Scan and for your activism that you all uh, do and present on your platforms each and every day. It means a lot to us viewers, fans, and just um, the African-American community to see two, you two um, icons to always do that and present that uh, for us each and every day. Thank you, brother. Very humble. Uh, I want to um, talk about this film and, you know, the important message that I want to know what you two, uh, you know, what you want the viewers to take from this. Now, I know some people may or may not agree with what, what happens at the conclusion of this film, but beyond that, there's a message that is transcending all over the entire film. But I want to know from you two, and I'll start with you, Omari, what do you think that or what is that important message that you want the viewers to take away after the completion of this uh, of this film, despite the events that happens in it? Um, perspective, you know, and, and obviously that's a vague, quick response. Um, but there truly is that, you know, walk a mile in a man's shoes and understand that man more. Um, raising a daughter and, and a son. I am made aware that I'm constantly, when reading even scriptures from the Bible, I'm having to remind her that man is denoting woman as well. Cause she just hears that, she hears he and, you know, and, and sees the word man and not the W-O in front of it, bro. Yeah, yeah. Which, as you as you know, we, uh, we can't necessarily even begin to talk about what the black story is without talking about all of the mothers who have, I said it in a poem one time, who've had to be mother freaking daddies too. Like, so, so many black women get Father's Day cards. Yeah. So I would say that um, to walk a mile in the shoes of a black man, but dare I say a black woman as well, as Milana astutely stated um, in the prior interview, she's aware even that a black woman can't understand the specific walk of a black man, but what she does uh, have an awareness of is the gift of protector. That's a gift. Actually to be a protector mm. is a, is a gift. And, uh, and whatever that means, protector equally means allowing us to fly and to be daring. And to sometimes when we say we're going to the moon to not, you know, respond with a, w w wait, don't go to the moon. Wait, wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> your socks or your, or your lunch first. Sometimes protecting a black man is also allowing that black man to simply go to the moon without any questions asked. But equally, if you want that black man to get an opportunity to, to go to the moon, what the takeaway for me of all um, is definitely in this story that is more so Milana's story. And that is she just wants her son yeah. to be able to come home. Mm -hmm. Um Nate's character, obviously being the, the husband of, of Milana's character, he just wants his son to be able to get back home. So to be able to fly to the moon one day, whatever that means for that young black kid. So yeah. um, who plays my nephew, the, the kid, that character is my nephew in the movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I just think that, um, you know, it's such a beautiful lob that Nate gave Milana to be able to play this role because Gosh, the voices of all of these black women who have lost their sons yeah. has kind of become the resounding. Obviously, I, I just stated it to Milana, Nate, and our other cast members um, when talking to where well, they were privy to me stating it to an interviewer when saying that Corona is not the pandemic. The true pandemic has been the inequities of America and the, and the gross uh, or the grotesque, I should say, Damnesia on the fact that the people that are most made unequal are the same people that built the damn country. 
and it's grotesque in, in not only the forgetting that we aided, I should say aided in building the country with the amalgamation of all these other beautiful colors, uh, namely the Native Americans starting it, and that being the red color, but equally um, sometimes punishing us for things that we haven't done anything um, wrong in action, you know? And so for Milana to be able to play I can't you know, wait for her to answer this question because it must be interesting to play the portal or the bridge to get us all to understand what it must feel like to house the black kid in womb and in stomach before going to the doctor to deliver the child to the earth only for 16 years later in this movie for the child to not be able to come home. Like, here's my turn as a black man to say, I don't know what that would feel like because I've never been able to birth a kid and I never will be able to, not in this modern world until science changes and we can get pregnant and that ain't gonna happen. <clears throat> so I think the takeaway is that, yeah. understanding the cop, that's a perspective that we as blacks don't necessarily understand. Nate gave them a voice, beautiful. Understanding yeah. the inmate, Nate gave the inmates at the actual yeah. precinct a voice, that's never, ever been done in the movie. Yeah. Giving Nate the voice that he was able to give himself in writing his character, you know, giving an avuncular figure, an uncle, a voice, giving these young students that are filmmakers, Shane and Sierra, giving them a voice, but then again, giving Milana and her character a voice to, to express in pain what it feels like for a black woman to say goodbye to her son. No mom should bury their child, but the way that we are asked as black women often um, in this country to bury our kids is just really, really bad. So the takeaway should be that, just really understanding. I always yeah. say overstand, but we are a long way from overstanding. So at least let us get to the place where we can understand what it must feel like to be um, in that space that Milana found herself in playing that character. Um, Nigeria, thank you for um, posing this question and asking Omar to go first. <laughs> um, <laughs> you gave me some, some time. I, I really honestly have to say, uh, I've played a mother the majority of my career uh, in the beginning was me playing the young mom. Mm -hmm. And um, this was the first time I played a mom, I played a mother and a wife who's lost her husband. Yeah. This was the first time where I had to play uh, a woman who has lost their son. And um, I will say it gave me a, a vast amount of compassion for mothers who have lost their kids before they were able to become men, um, before they were able to express themselves in a world or in a society that helped to um, raise consciousness. Um, it's interesting, we were talking about Tupac earlier and, and all of this all of this wisdom this young man had at 23 and then he dies two years later, right? Mm -hmm. 25. So it was almost as if that was the mission is that he had to get it out and he had something to say because it was an expiration date that was approaching him and he was unaware of it. Maybe he did know, he kept saying, I just feel like the time is coming. Yeah. Well, right. I will say, I will say personally that I don't fear death. I know that it's coming. I'm not going to survive forever. So if I was to spend today as if I know as a mortal being that my time will come, I will say that there is no amount of, there is no amount of salve that can be placed on the heart of a mother who has experienced this. And so if nothing else, let's exude a lot more compassion to these black mothers from our black fathers who have birthed for nine months, the majority of them, a child to then have to bury their child by the hands of the police. Who is supposed not to be from war, not from some disease or dis-ease, not from um, some you know, freak accident, not from corona, but from the people who we were raised 
that just from the position that they're here to protect us. Listen, I grew up on the south side of Chicago. My mother had many friends who were cops, but she was a single black mother on the south side of Chicago, on the southeast side, 72nd and Sony Allen. She needed some help, okay? And I remember growing up as a kid, recognizing they wanted to drop me off at school. I was scared. I was like, no, they gonna think I'm arrested. I'm a, ba- I'm a child and I know this. Yeah. We're I'm definitely programmed. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like this is some type of indoctrination that is beyond, it's deeply rooted. Yeah. It's deeply rooted. And so I, I recognize that the, this film offers something that is extremely important is dialogue and conversation. Because remember, pre this uh, opportunity to speak via video conferencing, we were having these conversations in the privacy of our own home. And if we were given a mic and we had the authority and we had the uh, cachet to be Mm -hmm. able to say it, most of us may have shied away from it for fear of, you know, uh, rich, uh, um, uh, backlash mm-hmm. but now we're in a position we're seeing it we're seeing the world is seeing it I've worked out of the country I've worked in Africa Asia and Europe and we have access to news and we're seeing what's happening in this country all over the world and we're still now saying well uh, what can we do this is It's an interesting time. Um, yeah. I will say, I have to admit, um, when I saw the film for the very first time, it it made me extremely emotional. Uh, but it also made me feel as if I, I, it made me feel purposeful. Because there is a reason that I'm a part of this project with Omari and with Nate. Having both worked with these men, um, having both seen the rise of their exposure and still to be here in this platform in this forum to have this conversation means that no one, not one black person is protected. Well, um, I'm up on my time and I just wanted to say by ending off with this, I love you both uh, for all you've done for doing this film. Um, And it's amazing how you all answer four of my questions in one answer. So I really, really appreciated that. I wish you all the best. Stay safe and be blessed. You do the same. Y'all take care. Shout out to DC. Hey. Hey, Big Gold Bell.